effort at the, at the game tomorrow night. What does this mean to you? I'm going to be honest with you. The best part to me has happened so far, me walking through the door and seeing some guys I haven't seen in 15, 20 years, 25 years, some guys. To me, it's the best part already. I told Elizabeth just then, I say, I don't care what happens after this. The best part to me has been so far seeing my teammates, seeing guys that I, I bled, bled for, you know, seeing guys that we started this this, this, this stadium with these guys. And um, it's been a great experience. But um, to, to be um, the first guy who um, actually played in the stadium to, to go up on the ring honor, it's, it's, a, it's a huge honor for me. Um, I'm humbled by it. I know there's so many guys that played this game before I did, that played for this team before I did, and they carried this team on their back. So for me to be honored as one of the first guys in the second class along with Isaac Curtis, for me it's a huge honor. I'm, I'm so happy for him. I imagine it's going to hit different when you look up on the ring tomorrow night and you see your name up there. Just hoping I don't cry. Like, I, I get really emotional. I'm, I'm, I'm a cancer, so you know, we, we, we're very <laughs> emotional. So hoping I don't cry. But um, um, I thought about it because I, I do see a lot of guys. I've seen. You're retired now for what, 13, 14 years. And I see guys all the time getting ring of honor, but you never see, we, you know, I'm 47 years old. I, I haven't seen the very first or second class of guys in any current stadium, right? Because those, those teams did it 30, 40 years ago. So to be involved, to be the second class and be, you know, the, the fourth or fifth name going up there, to me it's a huge honor. And I, and I say, I hope I don't cry because I've been around for a long time. I was here when the stadium was built. Um, Jim Anderson, our old running back coach, just gave me one of the commemorative edition of magazines of uh, Takeo, Corey Dillon, Achilles Smith, Brian Simmons, Atreo Hawkins, we all on the front cover of the magazines with, with construction helmets on when the stadium was just rocks and bricks. So to be a part of that and to now see this now, it's crazy. What do you think the emotions are going to be like when, when that time comes and you get the opportunity to be out there on the field? Oh uh, man, it's going to be crazy, man. Like I say, I'm, I'm getting chills talking about it right now. Just just being around, like I say, being around when this stadium first building and not seeing your name go up on it. You kind of wish as a 25-year-old player, I was 24, I think, when the stadium went up, 24, 25, and now to be 47, to know that that 24-year-old on that cover I'm talking about was, was worried about being a great, worried about following Anthony Munoz's footsteps and trying to be one of the great tackles in the league. And at the time, I was playing at a very high level but wasn't getting any national awards because the team wasn't winning. So. I kept fighting and kept fighting and kept fighting and hopefully one day I was going to be um, at this this level of, of, of playing that, you know, just just ecstatic right now, man. What do you see in this team right now, Will? You, you talked with me in the locker room about a month ago yes, about yes, the yes. excitement around this mm -hmm. city and this team. They start off one and two. Mm -hmm. It's disappointing. Mm -hmm. But what do you see in this team watching them through those three games so far? Just they, 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 they have a, a different level of fight and attitude about them, even though they were 0 and 2. The confidence that they, they exuded was, was like, hey man, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna figure it out because we, we know what's in our locker room. We know the kind of guys we got here. You got Joe Burrow saying that, first of all. That he, he's telling everybody, just relax, I'm gonna be okay. And he knows if he's gonna be okay, the guy's protecting him. He knows what kind of defense he has. And the guys are very well coached. So, you know, guys like myself, we knew 0 and 2 start was gonna be. It's, it's a slow start. They, they were similar in the same position kind of last year a little bit. They overcame that. but. This team is a, is a team full of guys who overcome adversity. They showed us that last year time and time again. I, I have no doubt they'll keep showing it this year. You guys went through a lot of seasons where getting wins was, could be a difficult thing. Yes, a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so least, uh, walk me through what it means to you now, how proud of you are that this team are you, uh, and the fact that you were a Bengal. You are a Bengal. Yeah, like I'm, I'm a Bengal forever. And, uh, just knowing that you know, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever happened with me in the past uh, with the organization, to me, it's in the past. I always cheer for the guys, I always cheer for the players. I, I know what it means to, to put those stripes on, put that helmet on, and go through and fight for this city. I know how bad this city wants a winner, and what the city demands out of out of us as players. So, I always cheer for players, no matter where it's under Marvin. And to see these guys last year, it brought. You know, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and you know, there's not many people talking about Bengals last year, before last year. Now the entire city is talking about the Bengals. You know what I mean? And, and, and more and more Bengal fans are down in Atlanta, Georgia now than I've ever experienced in my, in my lifetime. But so to see that happening and see that the national brand is spreading and more and more folks talking about positive stuff about the Bengals because it wasn't like the Bengals were just like the, you know, the, the 90 Bengals that we went to. Like Marvin brought these guys and brought this team to a respectable level. They went down from 16 to 18 and then Zach took them back and took them there last year which just exploded on everybody. But um, they had the nucleus of guys, you know, the Jesse Bates and the guys like that who been around here, um, um, the Sam Wilber guys and, and guys that have been around here who, who, who were the heartbeat of this team. 
who knows what it be, who feels like to be on a low level, then come back up. But like even with Joe Burrow, he, he, he experienced that his rookie year, fought back through the injury, fought back, overcame, and last season was just addicted, addicted to what he went through his whole career so far. And um, I have no doubt that they'll, they'll be successful again. Willie, why is tradition such a big deal? It's huge, man. Like you know, and I've been one of the guys pushing for you know, I've been pushing for this you know since I retired. You know what I mean? I've watched the Pittsburghs and watched Baltimore where I played. I watched them do this thing they're doing year after year after year. And 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 you, 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 I wouldn't say I'd be jealous, but it was kind of like damn, like we wish. You know, my, my son is now 25 and he could make it today, but throughout high school and college, he never got a chance to see me get honored like this. And I was wishing when I retired, he was in the sixth, seventh grade. I was wishing for moments like this that he can see that, to kind of see that. And so many of those guys have sons, like Joe, Joe Walton, my mentor, his son is down at 6'10". Six, 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 and, you know, and he never heard, uh, he never seen a guy like me talk about his dad and right. reference when I talk about his dad. And so the tradition of that, guys want their kids to hear about their, their careers. My nephew's right here. I think one of his first time coming to the stadium. You know what I mean? Just just seeing this kind of stuff happen is a, is a, is a huge ordeal. And, uh, you know, tradition is very big. And the Bengals, even before this, had a rich tradition. Like, I've, I've heard Mr. Brown talk about, you know, the great players in the past, the 70s and the 80s. He, he brought guys back in. When guys would come in who played in the Cleveland Browns, he would bring them in and bring them to me to talk to him because he knew I loved to hear about the history of the game, the history of the guys. And so I'm just happy that they decided to do this right now. And um, like I said, so many guys that deserve this honor. I'm just happy to be to be one of the first ones to go into it. A lot of kids that are out there right now watching and you're going to see your name up there. But who is that guy? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think are some of those attributes that made your play so special that got you to the point where, where we're at right now? Just I think um, kids learning that, you know, my first seven years, they, you know, team-wise, there's some tough years. Even though my first two years were okay, my third through seven years were, were, were bad. But just knowing that you had to fight through adversity and you had to fight through self-pride and like, that's what carried myself and guys like Tequila Spice. I remember talking to Tequila vividly about, you know, hey man, we live in Atlanta, Georgia. And in all season, we're going to see some of these guys a lot because everybody lives in Atlanta. We got to be able to individually hold our heads up when we see these guys. Like, we're in our 20s, so we would be out in clubs and restaurants and like, hey, when these guys see us, we got to be able to hold our hand, heads up individually. And although they beat us the team individually, we played our tails off and gave ourselves a names and showed self pride. And I think I tell my kids in my academy right there, like right now. So it doesn't matter if your team is a great team. Individually, you have to be to change a team. You have to change yourself individually and win your battles individually first. And I tell my kids all the time at my academy, and we we, we preach and train to be first individually good. And if you're individually good, you get more guys playing at your level. You can change a team. Last question I got for you, if you guys have anything else, feel free. Is there, is there a, let's look to, ahead to the future. Is, are there two players that you've got your eye on maybe for next year for the Ring of Honor uh, that, that you, you want to it's, There's so many guys. I, I couldn't say, man. Like, I had no idea that I would get picked as early. I was one of the guys on Twitter saying, hey, let's get some of the guys that played back in the 70s and 80s first because we're, we're, we're so behind, you know what I mean? And that was no way I thought I would be in this early. I, like I said, I was actually petitioning for guys older than me to go in first because I mean, it's only right, you know. Um, and cause I was, you know, in 1988 down in Mobile, Alabama, you know, they only showed certain games on TV. They showed the Bengals for some reason on NBC a lot. I saw a lot of Bengals games, Cowboys and the Saints, maybe the Giants. And so I, I knew who that 88 team was. I, I knew somebody, I, I told Reggie Williams, I thought he was a the mayor of Cincinnati. In 88, I was 13 years old. Joe Walter was on that team, you know what I mean? And, and for 11 years later, you know, I'm getting a chance to play with Joe Walter. And, and, and him mentor me, and he gave me a year to, to play with Boomer for a year. I saw Boomer in '88, got a chance to play with him. So there's so many guys that were my heroes that I, I've seen play this game for the Bengals that I think you know probably should have been up there. So I can't really say, man. There's it's so many guys. Have any of the Ring of Honor inductees from years, in the year past did they talk to you about what it was like and what to experience? Well, I've been talking to Kenny Anderson for me because Kenny and I have been at a couple of events the last year or so together all the time. So came to the Super Bowl event. Um, several events we've been to. So he and Anthony talked to Anthony a couple of times and just those guys telling me just the, the thrill that they saw it. But I, but I saw it on, I saw it on their face that there's a picture vividly I have of Kenny put his jacket on. I said, yo, I can tell in his face that this, this was like a magical moment. And think about them, they, they were the first guys to go in. So imagine the feeling they felt 
after all these years of fight for the Bengals and going through what they went through to finally get their names up there. Excuse me. Jesus. Thanks, Willie. All right. Thanks, man.